One, two, three, four, let's go. It's hardly. It's a fabulous show. Alaska. I heard the Alaska. It's hardly. <laughs> Alaska. Pull up a chair and enjoy the show. You hear it from Sitka to Barrow. Gather around for Genie's show. Welcome to Heartbeat Alaska Native News and Native Information. I'm Janie Green. Thank you so much for joining us. And hello once again to my viewers in the state of Washington. Nice to have you with us. On today's program, we take you to the Aleutians, a fabulous stretch of islands. They're actually volcanoes. We visit four communities in the Aleutian Islands. I promise you, you've never seen a program like today's. Travel with me now to the Aleutians, where we meet a man who grew up in Sand Point, left Alaska, became a doctor, and now some of his patients are the very people who raised him. Meet Dr. Gary Ferguson. He spends a great deal of time in the air on planes like this one. Originally from Sand Point, Gary moved to the lower 48 to get his education. Now he's back traveling from village to village, making people's lives just a little bit better. The Aleutians are his home. The Aleutian Islands are a string of volcanoes that stretch for hundreds of miles. They form the line between the Bering Sea and the Pacific Ocean. For thousands of years, the Aleut people made these highlands home. We have a strong Aleut heritage. There's not a lot of us around uh, anymore. Um, but I think we're, we're as proud uh, of our heritage as, as any ethnic group. We have uh, long-standing roots here, thousands of years. Well, the Shagantaigunan means Eastern Aleut, Eastern people. And uh, my grandparents, my grand on my grandmother's side, uh, they come from a village called Belkoski. Nobody lives there anymore, but that's west of us here. The story of abandoned villages echoes throughout the Aleutians. The lure of jobs and money drew people from the smaller villages into the fishing ports until, in many cases, the villages had no one left. She was a full-blooded Aleut. She married my grandfather, who was a uh, full-blooded Finn. So I'm Aleut and Finn. And uh, a lot of folks in town here are, are half Aleut and half Norwegian or Finn or Dane or something, you know. Today, the Aleutians continue to be a melting pot of cultures. The fishing industry draws people from all over the globe to live and work among these majestic islands. Even with all the people moving around these islands, transportation is tricky at best. The term weather permitting seems to be tacked onto almost every travel plan. And this is why, like Dr. Ferguson says, if you don't like the weather in the Aleutians, just wait a minute. Temperature one, one Celsius, two point six Celsius. Today, Gary is traveling again. 
His pilot, Theo, isn't wasting any time loading the plane, and for good reason. Over the past few hours, the cloud cover, or ceiling, has been getting lower and lower. If it gets much lower, Theo won't be able to see well enough to fly. As the plane dips and bobs just under the clouds, Theo clings to the familiar shoreline of the islands he's flown by countless times. The travel gives Gary time to reflect. Currently, he's working for Eastern Aleutian Tribes. Eastern Aleutian Tribes actually provides service for um, six communities that correspond directly with the Aleutians East Project, and those six communities are uh, Sandpoint, King Cove, uh, Nelson Lagoon, Cold Bay, Akatan, and False Pass. Ingrid Cumberland is the director of tribal programs for Eastern Aleutian Tribes. This last year we've been really, really happy. We've been working with Dr. Gary Ferguson and he's come out and done a lot of just public education, wellness education. And in many ways, the work Gary is doing is groundbreaking. You see, Gary is not a medical doctor. He's a naturopath. Our training is very similar, and so it's just an allopath is an MD, and a naturopath is an ND, and so there's just, the separation between the two is just that uh, there's, a, there's a difference in how we're trained once we get our first two years of training under our belts, the, the following two years plus our residency or, or um, clinical experience is, is different. Naturopaths are specialists in preventive-based medicine. You know, we, we're primary care providers in the state of Alaska, but at the same time, as a naturopath, what I do is more focused in on lifestyle um, and diet and prevention of tertiary disease, which is like disease that, you know, basically once a person's already sick for a period of time, they develop complications, and they call that tertiary disease, meaning it's uh, the later stage of, of uh, their disease system, whatever, whatever it be, diabetes or cardiovascular disease or... You name it. We focus on more the the primary stages and secondary stages, treating that. And Gary practices what he preaches. Okay, so today we're just basically we're we're uh, going for a hike along the beach, head of the bay, over to Hot Springs Saddle, and we're going to check out uh, Akutan Volcano. The weather's good. Enough. While visiting Akutan, Gary spends a Sunday afternoon on a six-hour hike getting some healthy exercise. So we basically have to go to the head of the bay, which is an old settlement. It used to be a farm. They had cattle there. And, and the closer you get to Hot Springs um, Valley, you may see cattle, which you will see cattle if we get to the edge. You can look down and see the cattle that roam in that area. And it stays green the entire year because of the hot springs and the heat. And so the cattle have this incredible area to, to feed. And every once in a while, people go and get a cow for community consumption. As we can see we've already got a spot here that we're going to have to do a little up and over activity. So it's the evening when we come back it may be a little bit challenging coming back. We may have to wait in a couple spots if need be but my goal is that we're back around 8 o'clock which is going to be the lowest of the low tide the evening tide. It's a, a two and a half hour vigorous hike to the hot springs and uh, depending upon how many points we have to do the up and overs That'll cut down our time or extend our time, so it's up to the water. Currently, Eastern Aleutian Tribes is working to reduce tobacco use in their six villages. Nicotine's definitely something that's a, it's, it's an incredible drug. You know, it's been put on the list as, as potent and as addictive as heroin, um, which is an incredibly addictive drug. Um, and especially with the mixture of cigarette chemicals that you get in most cigarettes. <laughs> <laughs> this is Connie Newton. She runs a youth center in King Cove. It's open every night of the week, and it's a place where the kids can come and hang out, stay out of trouble. Um, it's in the school compound, so drugs and alcohol and tobacco aren't allowed. She works hard to provide a safe, fun place for the youth in here. Yet she still finds herself ducking outside for a cigarette. It's, it's tough. It is. It is really hard, especially with me being involved with so many kids and the recreation program. Um, I don't smoke around the kids because I don't think it's right with what I'm doing. But it's really hard to actually stop. Um, I started smoking when I was 16, 
I quit seven years ago, and I'm back smoking again for a year now. And looking for a special hypnotist to get me back off it, because that's what it took. I went to hypnotist, and it was like that. It was great. Yeah, I tried everything. I tried um, acupuncture. I tried the patches, um, the gum. And um, somebody had told me about a hypnotist. And I went and saw him and actually worked with three other people here in the community. He was in Anchorage. And it was first session, and it was great. And it lasted six years. That was wonderful, yeah. And now I can't find him. <laughs> yeah. And I know more now about the feeling of being addicted to it rather than just a habit. You, there's a difference. I can tell a difference from like before when I quit um, and then just started up. But there's a difference. You can actually, your body goes through some changes where it is, it's tough. And unless, um, I guess if you don't have your mindset on and ready to take that step and say, okay, I'm not gonna smoke. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a tough thing, and it is all mindset. There's a lot of mental, um, a lot of mental aspects to that, to get to that point where you can quit, and you can say no, because those cravings are so real. Yeah, it's either cigarettes or food. No. <laughs> well, you know, for a lot of people it is, and that's one of mine, yeah. Over in Sandpoint, Christine Nielsen knows exactly how Connie feels. When I, when I first quit smoking, I had to eat. I ate, 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 ate because everything tasted so good. And I had, to, <laughs> I had to have my pockets full of Skittles all the time, you know. And I had, I made sure I had shirts that had two pockets because one pocket full of Skittles was enough I had to have in both pockets. And, and I smoked from when I was seven until I was 55. So that was a long time, 40 some years. I made 75 pair of earrings in two days one time, and I could barely lift my neck up because I got a neck problem. <laughs> Christine enjoys making earrings in these beautiful kitchen towels. Uh, I'm, I learned how to make these. My uh, friend gave me a pattern, and then my daughter, stepdaughter made these ones. And this is the kind I made before, but these are way totally different than the ones I made. That's why I had to get sewing machine so I could sew, the, sew this part onto this part. She used to love to smoke while she was working on her crafts. Slowly, Christine's health began to get worse and worse. Before, I used to have to go to sleep with a cough drop in my mouth, just to go to sleep. Not one, but two. You know, I had one on each side of my mouth, and then I'd wake up choking from the cough drop. But I couldn't, and even, even to smoke, I couldn't smoke a cigarette without a cough drop in my mouth. And, I mean, that's how bad I was. But now I can lay on my back, I can lay, you know, I can sleep right through the whole night. Before I couldn't, I'd wake up like every hour coughing and coughing and coughing. Then one night, something happened she'll never forget. Well, I woke up in the morning, I went in the bathroom and there was, um, well, see, a lot of times when I go to the bathroom, I never turn the light on. I just go in there, and, you know, and I, I, when I got up, I went in the bathroom and there was blood in the bucket and I thought my husband was spitting up the blood and I asked if he was spitting up blood and he said no and and so that scared me so I went in the bedroom to look in the bucket I had in the bedroom and I was scared to look in the bucket because I knew what I was going to see in the bucket and there was lots of blood in there bright red blood and so I went to the clinic and told him well I had a real bad cold you know and coughing 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 and, but it was enough to scare me where I had to quit smoking because the first thing I thought it was cancer. And then they sent me out to get uh, CAT scans done on my lungs and my throat. Uh, they put scope down my throat and uh, scope camera thing down my nose to check out everything to make sure there was nothing wrong there and everything was fine. And they said it had to have been the strain of coughing so hard, which was making the blood, but. I'm glad it happened or I wouldn't have quit. Quitting wasn't easy. For a while, she couldn't even work on the craft she loved so much. Because I was so used to having, like when I did the craft stuff, I had to, I always had a cigarette in the ashtray when I did this. And I tried doing these, but I'd want my cigarette, you know, so I had to put it away and the only thing I could do was to work puzzles. From when I, when I, as soon as I opened up my eyes, I had my puzzle book. Tobacco is, is a symptom of often a mind-body-spirit reaction to trying to get themselves back into balance. 
the, w the way I look at tobacco smoking is, is it's just a symptom, just like overeating is a symptom of something going on emotionally often. You know, and we tend to stuff our emotions and feed them rather than express them and deal with them. And cigarette smoking is just an attempt to get back into balance. Um, the big, big puff, the deep breath, is is really a way to try to get back into a centered being. You know, like cigarettes center you. That's why people smoke. You know, it's during nervous times you smoke more because you want to be more centered. But it's kind of one of those. Uh, games you play in that it's you're chasing something that's very elusive because a cigarette also makes you more anxious in some and other levels it's kind of like it give you it gives you the initial plunge into that kind of like ah oh, centeredness and then there's anxiety that follows which is basically the nicotine and chemicals in our cigarettes we are at the head of the bay we made it finally it's quite a workout, but we're here. Now to go and see if we can go to the valley lookout. Uh, how do you get there? That way. What you got there? It's again that Sam Chushki. It's a uh, Russian name. Russian name is Petrushki or Beach Lovage, and it's a great source of vitamin C. This is uh, in the distance. You can see the edge of Hot Springs Valley, and if you look to the north of, of the valley, is uh, Akitan Volcano. Which, right now, if it were clear, you'd probably see the top of right now, just over this ridge. And then around the corner is. is you can look to where the Pacific, you can see both the Pacific um, area and uh, of course we have Bering Sea and the Pacific where they meet right here. So we'll see two different oceans technically on this island. You want to sign? <laughs> Last night, Gary visited with George McGlashan, a respected elder in Accutan. Like Christine, it took a big shock to get George to quit smoking. You know the reason I quit? No, I don't. When I had an operation, I had they opened me like a sea lion here. <laughs> yeah, I took my ribs apart. Worked on my heart. Gave me new valves so they could work again. <laughs> and the reason why I quit smoking, the doctor told me, he don't know what kept me alive. So I asked him, how come you talk like that to me? Well, your, all your, what you call these arteries? There's all nothing but nicotine, rock. He couldn't get a balloon through it. He tried it, you know. Some of that balloon up here, trying to get through the, you know, they couldn't die. Even watching the whole thing, what they were doing with it, they couldn't get it through, so. They told me I got have an operation. We're at Hot Springs Valley. This is uh, an amazing area. The stream that runs down here is, is filled with hot springs. You can't see it right now because of the wind, but Normally on a, on a calmer day, you see the smoke rising from the, the areas that are hot. There's actually one area down there that you can see a little bit of uh, steam action, but years ago, it's not used as much anymore. Um, folks used to come down here and, and fish for silver salmon and soak in the hot springs. And they talked about the healing properties for rheumatism and other kinds of complaints. This was a very healing area. so. Not only is it beautiful, but it's also a traditional healing site. You get to see all the plants and the berries form. It's a treat. You get to see that. It's, a, it's like a it's like a course in botany. Evolution plants.
This is Nora Newman. She loves playing her accordion at her home in Sand Point. She remembers Gary Ferguson before he was Dr. Gary. Oh, he was just like all, all the little boys and kids. You know, I've watched him growing up and, and stuff. And now, since he's been moved from here, I haven't seen him that much. And bumping him once in a while at the clinic and get to give him a big hug. And, and he always enjoys talking with me and stuff. And so now I'll probably get to see him on a regular basis. Nora used to smoke. She was lucky enough, she was able to quit cold turkey. Like with my quit and smoke, and you gotta have like good willpower. And, and of course me, I'm kind of a stubborn kind of a person. <laughs> I'm mixed up Aleut, Norwegian, and a little Russian. And so I said, you gotta just be strong. Whether it's music or crafts or exercise, the key is to find a healthy activity that allows you to release your stress and relax. Yay. <laughs> Though the people in Aleutians have much in common, they rarely get to see each other. The weather is treacherous quite often, and going from island to island is sometimes very difficult, but recently they met together for some very, very good reasons in Un-Alaska. It was great to meet you. Yeah, we're hoping to do some outreach in the schools. Today, Gary is over in King Cove. King Cove is a village that grew up around the cannery built here in 1911. Peter Pan operates a huge fish processing plant here, which is still the basis of the economy. King Cove has a population of about 800, but there can be around 500 non-residents living and working at the plant at any one time. Over at the <laughs> clinic, Gary is just finishing up after a long day. After catching up on some paperwork, he's ready for a good, healthy dinner. So, what's Gary's favorite place to eat in King Cove? We're going to Peter Pan Seafoods, where you get, you get to have a fresh salad for dinner, which is a rarity in the Aleutians. So it's the, it's the hot spot whenever I'm in the Aleutians to go to. King Cove Cannery, Peter Pan Seafoods, gotta have it. Well, all of the canneries do serve food as far as, and, and if you're part of the, the professional community, you can, you can eat there if you're, if you're visiting the community as well as local people can go there and eat as well. It's the beginning of a healthy meal. Dr. Ferguson staff. <laughs> Tomorrow, Gary will fly to Unalaska, Dutch Harbor. Dutch Harbor is one of the busiest ports in America. During World War II, it was bombed by the Japanese, and the reminders of that war 60 years ago are everywhere. Today, people from all over the Aleutians are here for a different kind of battle. They're fighting for healthy lifestyles. This is the first time I've been to a conference where we're just listening to people, Aleut views and Aleut ideas and, and Aleut things that they wanted to learn and things that they didn't like about themselves and that they wanted to change. As the week-long wellness conference winds down, Dmitry Filimonov prays for the group. Lord, our Heavenly Father, we, we thank you for your guidance, your love. You have given us help during this conference. We pray that what you have instilled in us we will have the wisdom and the love to share with our people who are waiting the news. Lord, these are trying times, and, and we know that, that you have been a stronghold. Although we have been exploited time after time, you have been there for us, and, and we have persevered. And, and I know that, that with this conference, you will give us strength to and wisdom again so we can move forward. We ask that you bless every one of us and, and give us again strength to work as a region and not village by village, but as a region as a whole. And with unity, we have strength. And we ask that you 
overseas people as, as they head back home. Thank you. With plenty to think about, Gary finds himself on a plane again, going to yet another village. Gary is just one of the many people dedicated to making this remote piece of Alaska a better place to live, a healthier place to live. This show was presented to you by Eastern Aleutian Tribes Incorporated through a tobacco prevention grant by the Department of Health and Social Services. Thanks also to the people of Accutan, Cold Bay, Falls Pass, Nelson Lagoon, King Cove, and Sandpoint. Wasn't this a fabulous show? I want to thank Eastern Aleutian Tribes and the State of Alaska, the Department of Health and Human Services for making this program possible. Thank you so much, Carol Odenzoff and Claudia Palacios. Thank you so very much for your inspiration. These ladies made this program possible, and if you see them, thank them for me, won't you? God bless every single one of you, and join me again next week for more fabulous programs right here in Alaska. I'll see you then.